I always thought that like when you had to prepare for a test or something like that or a project or an assignment that was due, you had a due date, right? So when you had a due date, typically I would start working on things maybe like three or four days out, even though that assigned task was <laughs> due like five weeks before that. But you procrastinate based off of just life and having other things and other duties and other like necessities coming into the way of getting that task done. But I thought that after college, that would all stop. But even though we're in like work and like we're grown ups and that all is still there, procrastination is just a th like a human generated thing. And it's just everybody's going to deal with it at any stage in their life. Do you guys feel the same way about that? Or how do you guys see that? I agree with everything you just said. I loved when we'd all be at the library studying last minute. I remember James Lagama crushing monsters, <laughs> doing some type of either paper. Focus Fox, gotta focus up. Focus Fox, oh my God. crushing Quiet monster, coyote. <laughs> pulling all nighters. Obviously, yeah. Ryan and I we used to. Well, James would teach us. He would be on the yeah. whiteboard because that's how he learned. Is he would teach us, yeah. and we would learn by just okay. Yeah. I was writing papers last minute. You were studying for whatever chem bio. You know what the worst test was that we started doing? I don't know. Oh, at least I did it. I think you guys might have done this a couple of times. But instead of doing the all nighter, we said, you know what? I'm going to procrastinate this even further. I'm going to wake up more. more. <laughs> <laughs> well, the uh, thing is, though, that doesn't go away. Never. You had no option. You had to actually get up. That was the difference, though. Right. Like yeah, you didn't yeah. get up, but the best thing is you hit the snooze button. And it's like, oh, you're scrambling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I have a different take on what Kenny said now that we're adults. I don't know if I view it as procrastination now that we're adults, given the fact that a lot of our things don't have due dates. And we've talked about this on previous episodes where it's all about prioritization and then reprioritization. So is it procrastination as an adult where you're putting stuff off or are you just reprioritizing the most important thing and you know that whatever that item is you put off, you can still get it done in that amount of time. So I, when we were th talking about this, I was struggling with that concept, but I kind of started to lean more towards, I don't know if I really consider it procrastination when it, it's more me reprioritizing. Look, I like what you said though. I, I think that's a great point and yeah. something what we need to touch on because I think that's a misconception. Procrastination, you're literally avoiding something. Correct. Yeah. You're not avoiding the task. You just have something that's a higher priority. So you have to load balance. Pro procrastination is not that you you're just can't get to the task because you have other things in, it, in its way. Like that's kind of, When you said that, Kenny, like you said, you had life stuff and things going on. I think generally in college, we were actually avoiding it because we wanted to do the fun things because this wasn't fun. And or the other side of procrastination is that you didn't think you were going to do a good job on it. And so because you were, didn't want to feel uncomfortable, that's why you avoided it. But it's not the fact that you have a plan in place because if you have a plan, you're organized and it's not laziness. It is not laziness. Yeah. You're, you're just actively avoiding it. It's a behavior. Yeah. It's a choice. What's also interesting, too, is you start off with when we were back in college. A lot of the data focuses on students with procrastination mm -hmm. and not, you know, out, out, out of school, you know, that life after the fact. So I think that all kind of ties together because when you're a student, you might not have all of those different responsibilities going on, mm -hmm. which gives you the opportunity to pick and choose when you want to push things off. So it's just very interesting to me how that it, how it kind of evolves. Well, you're but, learning time management in college. Right. I have a question for you, though. You said you don't really have hard deadlines. Do you, and this is just every business and every industry is different. Do you not have hard deadlines ever? Or, and you just have running tasks that your team has to complete? How does that work? No, Customer we definitely have, have deadlines on certain things. Like this, this past week, for example, I had something, I had a presentation Friday, three o'clock. And I said on Monday, hey, I'm going to start working on this and, you know, I'll be ready to go. And Monday, something blew up and that rolled into Tuesday and Wednesday. And that had to be taken care of. Now, Friday came along. And I'm like, OK, I know I have this this afternoon team. I am not I cannot be reached today. I need to finish this. And I was able to get it done. So I don't look at it as procrastination because. I had, I knew I could put it off to Friday because those other items that I was not planning to work on, you know, as an owner of a company, things just blow up and you have to yeah. address it right then and there. So it was kind of, it's very fresh for me, I guess. I, I think on top of that though, it depends on what your role is, right? So Ryan, sure. Ryan has a, a higher role 
where he has reports and stuff, and those do get deadlines. But I think in in uh, as he came up in his company, the previous role that he was in was answering the phones, right? So it's not necessarily a deadline. You were he was giving customer service, right? He he had to take each client as they come in. It's volume based, right? Okay. Um, now. Even even volume based work can also have deadlines too. Um, it just depends on what product or service you're dealing with, right? right? Um, but I, yeah. So something, and the reason I I brought this up is because someone told me one time a statement that I'll say in a minute that I would say helps me get started and complete the tasks that typically don't have deadlines. And a lot of like what I do is I would say fifty percent of it is urgent, fifty percent of it is theoretical growth development and structure or standard operating procedures that need to go into place to help with the growth of the company. But if they're not implemented, the company's not going to break. But if they are implemented, it could help with scalability or growth or development or um, interpersonal communication or whatever it is from department to department. But technically, it's not urgent. But something that someone told me one time was, In 90 days, right, what you're doing today is effectively going to be the position that you're in 90 days from now. So if I'm sitting there doing nothing today in 90 days, I'm going to dramatically feel that effect. But if I'm hustling and I'm busting my butt to work really hard, bring in business, create processes in 90 days, that's what I'm really going to feel the effects and the benefits of that. So what keeps me going is, I have to go in, I go into things knowing that today I'm not going to see the effect of this. It's almost like positioning my mind for delayed gratification where I understand and I'm knowingly taking action for something without the assumption that I'm going to get a result from it until 90 days from now. Because a lot of the things that I think can go on the wayside are things that we feel are not urgent or are not a complete dramatic high priority. So opposed to not feeling like we want to do those things or not wanting to feel uncomfortable, those things are definitely going to be procrastinated because of the awkward feeling. But there's tasks that come about that you just delay because they always fall down on on the list of priorities. But where can it put you in 90 days from now is the big question. And I always think about that. Mindset's a big part of work in general. Um, I, I agree with you, Kenny, but I would also combat that with when I have a task that doesn't have a hard, fast due date, like there's, there's things that I have to get done on a, by a certain date that's mandated by a regulatory requirement. It's different, but if it's internally and we're like, we would like to get this done by such and such date, right? The thing that makes me procrastinate is when I have an unrealistic due date that was set because you don't actually know how long something's going to take you. You say, I want to do this, right? You try to come up with a plan, but again, you keep hitting roadblocks and then roadblock after roadblock, you start getting, you lose confidence and then you're just like, well, fuck, I just don't want to do this anymore. And and that's when the procrastination starts to set in and to break through that, that hurdle sometimes can be challenging for people. Yeah. Um, But that, that's actually usually my biggest trigger point is the unrealistic deadlines. I think... I think that only comes with practice. Like you got to get good at it, like understanding what's a realistic for you and what's your workload looking like, that kind of stuff too. But to play off that, I think there's two things I think about with that. One is typically when I'm procrastinating about something, it's because that I don't understand the the Mm -hmm. goal or the finish line. Mm -hmm. If I can't, if I don't understand the finish line or like, if I don't know where that, where that end point is like, okay, I have to get from here to here in order to complete this task. I will procrastinate that because I don't have a really thorough understanding of what needs to be done and what the objective is to to accomplish that goal. So if you don't have that in line, I think it becomes difficult. I just want to clarify. Are you talking about if you don't know what means finished or are you saying you don't know the roadmap from point A to point B? Like you know point B, you just don't know how to get there? Or is it actually the actual finished product? Like what is I'm done? I think that it's... um, See, a lot of the, the a lot of the problems that I'm solving are not they're not the roads not paved for them. I'm creating the the road to be paved. Okay. So because of that, it's it's a different level of like thought process. It's like creating the operating procedure through the process. But if like for instance, right? 
if we're working with a company and I see this very often, far too often than I would like, but if the company does not know where they want to be, mm -hmm. if the company does not know their goal, mm -hmm. the company doesn't have a clear vision. I was on a call with like this a couple of days ago where I typically do marketing, right? Top line growth strategies, all of the things that they needed except for one. And there was probably a list of 15 to 20 different things were basically operations problems. I, I mean, I'm, we're, we're a top line growth company. Now, can I help with operations? Yeah, because it's systems and processes that I've built into multiple companies, but right. operations is not really marketing. Mm -hmm. But because of their fault in operations, where you see a difficulty in understanding the finish line is like, okay, we have all of these little roadblocks that lead to this end result, but they're just jumping around the end result because they have all of these little hurdles before that. So their end result, I was vividly unclear of yeah. what the goal was. So really you didn't know what B was in this case. Yeah, I yeah, guess. B was completely case. and utterly unclear. But it was not unclear because they just like, I kind of didn't know, but also like they're a younger company. Mm -hmm. So they just, they were ironing out their kinks, but that's where it becomes difficult in that. Like I can't create a process to the end goal because yeah, I guess I didn't know where B was. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for helping me solve that. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> Uh, that, but that, that's an interesting take. That's a, that's a very interesting take. Cause I think, um, that could be true for a lot of reasons why people procrastinate is cause they don't really understand the end goal. But, um, the reason why I mentioned that is because one of the biggest ways to get yourself out of procrastination is to develop the roadmap, to break it down and yes. then chip away slowly at small attainable tasks and think about what's next. Yeah, but think about it as like a workout, right? People want to go to the gym and be fit. You can't just show up and all of a sudden be, have glamour muscles. Walk around. Well, you can't. Like if you just show up and walk around and hit the treadmill, do a couple curls, bounce around, like one, you're not going to get That's not going to be a serious reason for you to go back day in and day out. But if you go in and you're like, I'm hitting chest and tries, or I'm hitting back and buys, and I have these four chest workouts, these three – tricep workouts. I'm going to do a 15 minute cardio run and a five minute ab run. And then the next day you have exactly that. Like you're, you're basically your standard operating procedure. Your process is paved. So it's helping you go from step to step. But if you're walking around aimlessly, difficult, mm -hmm. difficult. And that's when procrastination will hit. That's what I've found. Do you guys have any other triggers or anything about procrastinating? You deal with it like a lot. Like, do you find yourself procrastinating? frequently in your daily life? I think I'm the king of procrastination. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that. Give him his crown. I look I look at it a little bit differently though. Okay. And I when you mention college and then as you get in the workforce and you're in business, again, you both and you have all three of you guys have mentioned this. It's about prioritization. What is urgent versus what's important. <clears throat> now one thing I think you need to look at, and I kind of want to ask you guys this question is, do you believe there is a such thing as structured procrastination? Because that's how I go about it. I believe that if I know there is a game plan and there's a strategy put in place, no matter if I wait to the last minute or not, the mentality is I'm going to get it done. And I'm going to exhaust everything I have to in order to get that whatever it is done. But however, you have fires that come up. You have things that come up in your day to day. All of you guys are in management or managing people. Half the time your job is managing people. And it's like, how do you get your deadlines done? For me, where I find myself stressing out is I can do everything proactive and get things done. But when a customer waits last minute and then expects me to come to the table and have a solution for them, that's where my stress management starts. But there's really nothing I could do at that point because it's like you waited till X, Y, Z day. You waited till the last minute to get me something that I need in order to solution or provide some type of value for the organization. Um, but I guess my original question to the point is structured procrastination. Do you believe that's a thing? I got two words for it. Go for it. Organized chaos. Organized <laughs> chaos. I love some organized, organized chaos. chaos. Organized Absolutely. chaos. That's like, all it is. And listen, this is not, there's no facts to this. 
But in college, I learned very quickly when I was political science major, beginning of my, my tenure, good old college. Hmm. That changed very quickly because I realized politics is not for me. Don't want nothing to do with it. Uh-huh. It's all negativity. Um, I wrote papers better last minute mm-hmm. versus, you know, doing a paper two to three weeks out and doing a little bit one time and then arriving under pressure. And I like my papers 100%. always got a better grade when I waited to the last minute. And again, I'm not saying that's the right thing to do, but my grades showcased that, hey, if I actually waited to the last minute and put 12 to 14 hours in one day, it worked better than actually breaking it down. I wonder if yeah. scientifically um, the way your brain functions at that moment. So uh, the biggest thing I've, I've heard recently on um, uh, protocols for being um, – I'm, I'm drawing a blank on the word, but essentially being able to uh, do a lot of stuff in a short amount of time, be efficient and that kind of stuff. Uh, there's a word for it. I'm just blanking. But uh, it says that the brain can only focus for about 90 minutes at a time. Um, in that case, though, you are definitely working more than 90 minutes and producing quality work. So I'm wondering if there's kind of like a uh, fight or flight response with your brain that you're actually able to undergo much more rigorous focus period at that time and get something done that's really, really good and requires a lot of your brain power to get it done too. It's not like a physical thing. It's, it's all mental. Mm -hmm. It'd be, I'd be interested to understand that more. Uh, but from what I understand, you're technically only supposed to be able to focus well for 90 minutes. And then recalibrate your brain and then come back for another 90 minutes. Yeah. I agree with you. I work better under like clinch time. Like when it's like. Pressure's on. Yeah. When that pressure's there, I, I do work better and I agree it's in shorter spurts. It does not take me as long to develop an understanding or a game plan or a solution to something when it's um, weeks out. But mm-hmm. I, you know what, something that I'm thinking about while you guys are talking is, can you put yourself, your team in a state of false urgency that allows you to undergo almost like a fake model of pressure to get things done proactively but still enable that like it's game time under pressure scenario you know what i'm saying it's a good point now you're doing it proactively but you're still getting the results of a creating your own placebo effect (laughs) kind of (laughs) kind of yeah it was procrastination, by the, or uh, it was. Uh, oh my god, I just lost it again. Productivity is the word I was trying to come up. Come up haven't with to haven't have most productive thought about time, that enough, Ken, or figured it out. For me, what's worked is I just kind of open up the controlled chaos to them earlier. I just am more transparent with them and kind of put them in not in the same day to day environment that I'm involved in, but I kind of let them know where I'm at and maybe structure things where they're feeling that controlled chaos and I'll call it maybe that stress and that pressure a little bit in their role, but it's only going to, in my opinion, help them because as they grow their careers, they're, if they're able to be comfortable in that environment earlier and be able to thrive in that environment earlier, you know, it's only going to benefit them in the long run. Mm-hmm. Well, I think to your point, Ryan, you have to obviously provide some context of, Hey, like I was in your shoes at one point right. mm-hmm. and what I'm asking you to do or what I expect out of you is something I would expect out of myself if I were in the same position, right? What I'm asking you to do is not something I wouldn't feel comfortable to do. And it's like trying to set the message straight and also giving them clear defined expectations that is going to set them up for success. Now, again, we're talking more about how we provide that insight to others, but it's again, more about us in a way from procrastination. I think it's Again, the organized chaos, you're either going to be able to deal with it or not. And a lot of times it's the mental thing. It's the the stress that gets to you. It's the stress factor where it's like, shit, now I'm scrambling. How am I going to get this done? And then that's probably what plays the most from a, from a delay or trying to get something done. Yeah. Huh. Interesting, interesting, interesting. I'm trying to, I'm trying to think of moments in time in my life where I maybe tried to do something that you were talking about, Kenny, where... I forced myself into this corner and, and helped me get the thing done. Um, I do it a lot. I feel like I'm almost doing it right now, too. Now, granted, I'm not saying that there isn't a boatload of things going on all at once. Complete organized chaos. Um, it's almost the borderline of becoming unorganized chaos. Um, but 
I, I've gotten to the point where I've actually said, okay, that's it. I got to get this done. And I already told my boss too, like, hey, next week, I'm, you're not going to be able to use me for any other things. Like I have to, I have to put the time towards this. Um, so I don't know if I'm purposely putting myself against the wall and creating that environment. Maybe I am doing that subconsciously, but, uh, it's an interesting thought because you know, like Johnny, you said, you know, you did good under those, uh, in that environment under the pressure and doing it last minute. But I don't know if that's the solution to, I don't think it's healthy either. No. So it's and interesting. I, well, go ahead before I'll tell you how I do it, but no, I'll just say like, it, it's always easy to say like, Hey, you did good, but Hey, what if you actually were proactive and think, did things differently? Could you have done a better job? And that's like the what if case. So again, I think you got to look at yourself in the mirror sometimes also like, Hey, this proposal, this thing I built out, this strategy, this business case. Yeah. It could have been good, but could it have been better if I didn't wait to the last minute? But again, it's like, how are you prioritizing? There's other things that are more important and you just got to delegate and also do it the way you want to do it. I don't know. And that's why I really like the model of becoming almost into putting yourself into a false situation of heightened urgency, because if you do that on a proactive timeline, what you Mm. produce could then be revised and still has enough time in the event that it was it was produced at the level that it could have been produced. If you were procrastinating until the date it was due, now let's say you did this exactly a week earlier. You created this false situation, you produced this solution or whatever you produced, and then you had a full week to be able to look at that and Mm -hmm. revise it at a level, take a step back for a day, analyze it, make slight adjustments, and then now is it like, is this thing like bulletproof? Maybe it's something we we try in our respective fields and follow me down this path, but you compare it, which we do a lot of times with sports, and you always hear about the great ones, and they always would find ways to create false narratives, to, to create ways to put additional pressure on themselves or <laughs> to take it personal, what Deion mm-hmm. Sanders training, yep. right? Find different ways to get in that mental headspace and lock in more than maybe they were planning to. Jen, now we're just applying it, you know, to the workforce. Like So just because something we can all relate to. At practice... Why do we run, like, after literally at the end of every practice, basically, why do we run red zone offense or defense every time? How, like, the two-minute offense. Right, so that just comes Preparation to yeah. prepare for something that... But it's a false reality. Yeah. We're not under two minutes. Right. Yeah. But it, you're prepared for it. So it's almost like a case scenario where, like, now you're prepared for it. You're running this fast-paced, no-huddle, two-minute kind of drill, basically, in, mm-hmm. a, in a false situation almost kind of creating a reality and then the next time it happens or even like after that you can analyze it and say hey next time we do this let's change this let's do this you can analyze and adjust and almost perfect it but you don't have you're doing it a week before the game or you know the day before the game whatever i'll add to that too because you think about again when you hear uh athletes compare well i went in practice 120 miles an hour, 120%. I made practice harder than the actual game so that when they got into the games, it was easier. It was muscle memory at that point. And I don't know if we see that as much anymore from an athletics standpoint. We've been out of it a little bit, but I can say, you know, there's probably a lot of times where we didn't take practice that seriously. And again, compare that to the workforce, probably going to probably have a lot of benefits if we are, if you are able to kind of, like you said, create that false narrative to add that additional stress, Mm -hmm. you know, something to look into. Well, that's a mentality and discipline thing too, right? Yeah. We've talked about that in in, in previous episodes. It's just, it takes a select character to be able to hold themselves to that standard. And it doesn't have to be sports. If you do that in business, you're going to win and dominate. You have to have that it factor. But again, you have to put yourself in those shoes and actually do it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you said that because That was going to be my point, and I wanted to take us into a different perspective of procrastination. Sure. Let's do it. Um, I'm I'm going to be very kind to you all. You all have very strong mindsets. I would would argue that you all – and I I feel like I have a little bit of this. I don't think I'm as strong as you guys are, but very strong-willed and strong-minded. You you guys have a unique ability to just wire your brain a certain way – and you're extra competitive, and I think competitive comes with it. 
Um, but I, I think you're outside the norm. Where procrastination is really bad for a lot of folks is because their strength in their mindset isn't there. They're very negatively thinking. Mm -hmm. You guys are not very negatively thinking. So I think I just want to make sure I'm pointing that out because Good. one of the things uh, I, I've read up online about procrastination as we're preparing for this, this uh, discussion, uh, the University of Texas of Aust of Texas at Austin, weird. But anyways, <laughs> University of Texas came Welcome up with this down. thing. <laughs> Welcome down. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome down. Uh, there's a there's a known talk about and what it varies as you as you kind of look at different charts and stuff. But there is a uh, different charts of the vicious cycle of procrastination. And so I, I just want you guys to hear some of this stuff and then realize: Do you guys do any of these things? Like your way of thinking? Because I think. Most people that have problems with procrastination just have a brain wired this way. Mm -hmm. So first it starts out with unrealistic goals and denial of a problem. Now the unrealistic unreal goals I think goes with your point B thing. Yeah. But do you have a denial that there is a problem? <laughs> no. Usually you're, you're, you're self-aware and you can say, I've got a problem right now. Right? i got to fix something. Or like I need to get my life in shape. Like you, you have that ability to do that. Yeah. Uh, delay cause because of fear. Having anxiety and stress. Then it comes into missing the goals, worrying about uh, that, having self-criticism, and then they're avoiding it. Then it comes into approaching the actual deadline, and then they're overwhelmed, high anxiety, uh, and becomes a frenzy. And it finally finishes off with there's then disappointment, rationalizing, and then trying to say, I'm going to commit to do better next time. Mm -hmm. But they keep going down the same vicious cycle. It's like the definition of insanity, our right. favorite thing to say. Mm -hmm. it's, it's doing the same thing and expecting different, different results, results right. right? But I think where you guys are coming into play with how you guys are coming up with tips to get out of procrastination is definitely a mindset thing that you're cultivating, right? You're creating that falsehood. I don't know if everyone out there truly mentally is strong enough and capable of doing that. Now, I think it's a tactic they can use as they improve, right? But I, what I'm trying to say is that they have a negative mindset usually, and that's what kind of connotates towards procrastination, right? It's not laziness. It's not putting things off because you have higher priority items. It's because they are avoiding it. They are stressed out. They, they feel something that they cannot uh, get, uh, work through this problem, so they completely avoid it and just never address that fact ever. Mm -hmm. Here's the thing. The likelihood that you're facing an event or situation or a problem that has not been solved or not been tackled by another human being on Earth is f basically almost impossible. Mm -hmm. Unless you're Elon Musk putting fucking <laughs> spaceships on Mars, the likelihood of you coming into contact with a problem or situation that cannot be solved is excessively minimal. There is always a solution, even though it might not be vividly clear in front of you and it might be hard to find and you might not know what that solution is. There is always a solution, always. And if it's not a straight and narrow solution, you might have to figure it out. But figuring it out is part of the process. And that's why you're procrastinating. So figure it out and you'll get it done and stop procrastinating. I mean, I think everyone has the ability to get out of that mental lacking of whatever type of issue that they're solving because they feel like they can't solve the problem. You can fucking solve the problem. Figure it out. I think that's the biggest thing. So that passionate speech right there just took me back to an episode of The Office. It's when Jim, he gets assigned a report by, I forget who the character's name was. It was Idris Elbra. He came in yeah, as yeah, like yeah, ATM yeah. I remember this one. or whatever. And he needs something done by Jim and Jim can't get the details on it. And he keeps asking, but he doesn't really dive in. He's just kind of jumping around. So as a result, he doesn't understand it. He's procrastinating. He's pushing off. Like when you get assigned these projects, normally you have someone like you're not by yourself, right? You have people yeah. you can go to. You just may feel embarrassed about asking the question or not confident or, or whatever the case, but there are solutions or there are, are options available. You just have to attack that challenge not feel bad about it, um, grab the bull by the horns, because at the end of the day, like your leaders, and we talk about this in my company all the time, you, when you when you have individuals, they all need different types of leadership at that moment. You yeah. know people that, hey, take this, run with it, and you know they don't need any help. You have people this may be new to them, and they need more guidance, and you're willing to provide it, but you can't just hand them the answers. So that part of it too, knowing you have resources available, but then also you know utilizing those resources instead of being scared of the moment. 
And Johnny, I think uh, okay. I was going to say, Johnny, what do you think about this? Johnny, what would Vayner, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk say right now? Empathy. <laughs> I, like, uh, I like that. It's on your shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I think so. When you, when you mentioned like the leadership standpoint, I think it also comes down to you need to understand how to lead that individual. Yeah, absolutely. Every single person is different. Yes. And it goes back to as a leader, I think one of the skills. And one of the things that maybe leaders miss out on is they don't really understand the individual that they're working with or they're leading, quote unquote. And if you don't know how to lead that person, you don't know what makes them kick, wants to see success. You don't know what their goals are. You don't know what their, you know, with them in life is. And when I say with them, like what's in it for them, like from a personal and professional standpoint, I think you're already setting yourself back. Agreed. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting. I mean, you can go back and forth. Like, it's just you got to look at yourself in the mirror. Boom! Like, I think you just hit the nail on that. You just got to look at yourself in the mirror and be realistic. And it's it's fucking hard for people. Like, let's just yes. be honest. But that's the first step because it's a mental block it's that you have. It. It's a yeah, it's you. Exactly. You are the problem. So when Kenny says there's problems out there and there's solutions that for every problem that anyone's, I think you're right, Johnny. You have to identify the fact and have self awareness. It's me. It. Yeah, and I'm that's the reason hard. why I'm procrastinating, and that's why I'm saying it's so hard. So you guys are strong-minded, is what I was trying to point out, right? You guys have that ability to do that. Just look yourself in the mirror and say, "No, you need to stop acting out, right? You know, there's a solution. You need to just, you need to get your shit together." But I, I think you made a great point, Johnny. It's, it's yourself. You have to look yourself in the mirror. Yeah, I think my compassion towards. Um not just this topic, but any type of topic that comes into play with mindset is it, it's just because I feel like if, if there is a mindset, mindset element to it, you have the capability mm -hmm. to making a decision. Unless you're like incapacitated, you literally have the ability <laughs> to make a decision. And a decision is what's going to alter your mindset. Mm -hmm. And then a constant string of decisions is what's going to create a mindset into a ritual or a habit. So I think that you have to start somewhere. It's going to suck. And I think that one thing I thought you were going to say was like the embrace the suck type yeah. of thing. Mm -hmm. Like it's going to suck. It <laughs> always sucks. Like, yeah. I mean, a lot of the things that you're procrastinating sometimes though, I, I with things that you procrastinate with, you're like, I should have just got this done with like, yeah. that was stupid. I don't know yeah, why, yeah. I didn't, why I didn't, did, didn't do this for the last two weeks. Yeah. But in most cases it's going to suck. And then, the next time it's not going to suck because you now know how to do you it. You get better. Yeah. And like as a team leadership role aspect of it is like you don't want to just give them the, the solution. You don't want to be a crutch. But exactly. But then once they solve that and you're like, see, it wasn't that difficult. And this is the process to getting that mm -hmm. solution or to figuring that problem out. Then next time they're like, oh, that's easy. And they're going to become the person in your shoes. Mm -hmm. When someone else comes in and they're like, I have no idea how to do this, and this is, you know, I'm procrastinating on this, they're going to be in the position to say, like, well, I know the solution, but it's a process. And that's an awesome moment, not just for the person who gets over that barrier, but for their leader, because I think you've said it before. It's awesome just to see other people win. And you got mm -hmm. to see them go through those trials and tribulations, you know, fight through the roadblocks, get around it, over it, under it, whatever the case may be, and get to that end point. And then you get to see the reaction when they come across that next time. And it's super easy. So just being able to coach them through it, but also see the end result, it's just a great feeling and it encourages, you know, makes them want more. You know, what else do you have? It's a good point. I think one thing I respect and I appreciate you three is you all genuinely have a care for seeing others succeed and win. And that is also a testimony to who you are as a person. And I think that is like when you actually sit down and have a conversation, I kind of want to ask a question. It's like, have you ever had someone, <laughs> we've all had someone, miss a deadline, miss a time crunch? Like, what is your message to that individual and how do you go about giving them feedback? Because, listen, there's constructive criticism and constructive feedback, and I believe there's, they're very different. But if someone misses something or doesn't do what they're supposed to do, like, how are you going about it? And if you know it really comes down to procrastination, because you can definitely see very quickly why did they miss this assignment or why did they not hit this deadline? So, like, how does that conversation take place? My first question is, are we 
just address like has the issue been resolved or you were like this this question or and, and now the conversation there's a lot of happening? scenarios yeah okay just, yeah okay. You, you can go different okay. ways. just just a, just how you would hypothetical broadly gotcha. address gotcha yeah okay um i i actually um so if procrastination is the reason i i think that's what we want kind of yeah. want to talk about specifically i think the key here is if you're going to bring that up to someone, right? I think you lead them down the path of realization that's yes. procrastination first. And then I, the only way to grow is to learn, fail forward, mm -hmm. right? And so when when they're feeling procrastinated, as a manager, what I would like to build is enough trustworthiness to have them come to me when they're feeling that way. Love that. I, I'm starting to stress out about this project. I'm having a problem. I have hit a roadblock. And instead of shutting down and procrastinating, I'm coming to you. And I need help. Absolutely. I want I want those three words said. I need help, but I need to foster that relationship. So I'd like for them to fail as long as it's not a detriment to the company and like you know whatever it is. Because if you fail, you're only going to grow if you're willing to accept and learn from it. So that's that's kind Very of the, well uh, the way I like to take it. I love that. If it's procrastination, there's other things that can of happen course. where you make mistakes and stuff too, and you still want to learn from it. That's kind of the crux of the yeah. um, way of solutioning and, and coming to them as a, as a manager or a leader, but. That would be my my. I love way. it. I have a slightly different approach, but you hit a lot of my factors on the head. The first one is just the personal rapport and personal relationship you have with them. So I, I mm -hmm. could see it two ways. One, it's someone who's come through for you a lot. They're a consistent heavy hitter is what we usually refer to them. And and things happen, right? We put too much on their plate. They miss. They miss. They own it. They know it. I'm not really gonna like lean away from them. We're gonna give them more up like up the next opportunity, and we'll just talk about it in the beginning. Versus someone who maybe this is the first time they're going through it. I might just have more awareness on that project as it comes up, and if it does get to a point where I have to step in or we maybe don't hit it, hit a home run on it, let's talk about it, right? Let's talk about what we did to this point, what happened. Let's, like you said, let's learn from it, fail forward. And then when we come to an opportunity like that, the next time we remember and we discuss, Hey, you know, let's grow from that. We keep that, uh, that failure f fresh in terms of just reminding them how it went this time and how we can learn and grow from it. So I think it's who's involved with that process might just change my approach with it. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of the similar stuff for me, but, um, I break it down into, two different types of, of, I would say, factors. And this is, in a nutshell, what Ryan just talked about. I just break it down more scientifically, probably because of how my brain works. Depending on the relationship and the longevity of the person's employment and how many times this has happened, if this is in earlier stages, I might not have a true understanding of the person and the individual. If it's later stages and the longer the employment, I'll probably know more about their character. But initially what I do is I break it down and I ask a couple, I, ask, I start with asking questions. And my questions try to dive more psychologically into what the problem at hand is. And there's only two angles of where that, that problem can lie. Is this a character issue? Is the person uh, facing traits, characteristics, or some type of mentality element that's halting their ability to perform? Or is it a performance and skill related issue? So if the person is literally like procrastinated and like, like just didn't do it, I would say more than likely at the, at the initial stage, it's a character issue. But if going through things after a while and they were trying to do it, they're like 90% done with it, but they just didn't get it done on the, de the deadline, I will look at it as my issue at first and I'll say, well, did I preemptively ask, hey, can you get this done by Thursday at five? And if they say yes, then it's definitely like a clear, hey, I need this done by Thursday at five, and you agreed to that, and it didn't get done. So maybe something happened and there's an ability or skill element, so we can work through that and, and basically optimize to get you better at being able to hit the deadline. But if I didn't do that, if I didn't ask you, hey, can you get this done by Thursday at five? Well, then you didn't have a clear view. And going back to point That's B, true. that that B element, if you in order to get from A to B, you need to know what B is. And I wasn't clear as a team leader. Mm -hmm. And if I wasn't clear as a team leader, that's my fault. Yeah. And I can't be mad at anybody because I wasn't clear. So if I didn't give you where to go or I didn't give you a clear vision on point B, well, I have to do better as a team leader. So I just try to figure out really there, is it a characteristic element if it's a characteristic element, can we build upon that and get better at it? 
And after time, if it's not, then you're probably not a fit for the team. Um, and that's just what it comes to. And I've faced those challenges as well. Recently, we faced those challenges. Mm -hmm. right. But you know, it's just a process. Um, now, how long that process takes for a company, some companies you know, fire fast. Yeah. So that you have true. to have the ability to be able to adapt and grow quickly or mature quickly as a person coming onto a team. Um, so that's, I, I kind of take time to process. Yeah, but that's good. It depends. I love that. I love all three points you guys made. <laughs> Um, do, do we have a hot take, guys? Did you do it? <laughs> Ryan was going to do it. I didn't do it. The fuck, I never do it. See, this is why we got to be more prepared, guys. We clearly, we just avoided this one, huh? Completely avoided it. I thought, what are you talking about? I'm not doing it. I do the editing. Ryan said he was going to do this one. Well, what do we, do what? <laughs> Two weeks ago, you said you were going to do the hot take topic. When have I ever picked the hot take topic? All, All right. Well, poor planning on this one. Yeah. Clearly, clearly, we uh, we avoided <laughs> this one like the plague. <laughs> and we have no hot take for you guys. Until next time. Till next time. Bender continues. <laughs> um, now, I, I, I'm always loving to talk about leadership, managing, that kind of stuff. But to go back to the self piece, right? Um, procrastination again is, is you having like negative thoughts towards it, right? Mm -hmm. From a leadership perspective, you can identify and, and you, we've, that's what we've kind of talked on is how can we help someone not procrastinate and give them the tools to be successful. But from the perspective of identifying a self, right? Cause you could be a manager that's procrastination, procrastinating oh, and not yeah. have a manager oh, ahead oh, of you, right? Yeah. So, um, I, I, I think again, I, I still go to your mental aspect aspect and I know, We've uh, hit on the fact that there's definitely solutions out there. You can find ways to help uh, fix your mental mindset on, on how you approach work, how you approach challenges, and all that kind of stuff. But a lot of people out there have different upbringings, and that's the reason why their mindset's the way it is, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I would always be, um, you know, I, I always say you should definitely seek help. And that help might not just be your manager, because maybe you are lucky to have someone that's trying to implement some of these strategies that we were talking about as managers. But um, you might not have a good manager either. You could have a pretty shitty boss and you hate them. And that actually can help with your procrastination too. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I do think there's professional methods to help gain your mind, mindset. And I think it's a long road and you definitely can do it. But to talk about tips on how to get yourself to not procrastinate from a self perspective, not from a manager, there's a couple of things you can do. Um, we've talked about it once, and it's start small. Break things, break large tasks or big deadlines, major projects into smaller chunks. Uh, pick things that you can do now and just keep chipping away, mm -hmm. taking on the next thing as you go. You're making a plan. You're putting times and dates on those things as well. At that point, you're kind of creating those falsehoods, right, that we mentioned, where the falsehood sets a standard, a, a, a you're, you're creating that scenario where, okay, I'm saying I can get this done. It's realistic. Mm -hmm. it, I've broken it down. Now I have to hit that, right? And you can work on that and learn from it as you keep going. But making that plan and setting those dates and working towards those dates and everything as you chip away, great things. Um, finishing things, that's the big thing. Right, a lot of procrastination happens when you're just at the end zone and you're ready to go in, and it's the and you're trying to do red zone offense here. <laughs> you got a spot when a task is nearly done, and then just put the extra effort in. You have to be self aware yep. at that point. Don't get so stressed out that you're not about. You're like, I'm so close to the deadline. I'm ninety percent there, and shut down. You have to start to cultivate that mindset. Again, this is a long journey to try to build this up, but when things are almost finished. Get them done, and then you're going to have this realization of satisfaction of you actually knocking them off of your list. And that is the biggest thing. That is the best dopamine effect, period, is if, if when you complete things or you take a long journey to get something done. Right. right that's huge. Big, step four here, um, 
you, you got to deal with your distractions. That's another big proponent of procrastination. If you have distractions, you have to give yourself the environment to improve your focus. Uh, Kenny, one of the biggest things that you, you mentioned to me lately, now I've always known about this, but you employ this so much in your own office that you have white noise playing constantly. Huge, huge proponent for helping avoid distractions. It helps you improve your focus. You've created and cultivated an environment for all your employees, not just yourself. I'm at the point where I'm like living with my noise. <laughs> like, it's, it's in the office. It's crazy. It's, it's when in we your sleep. head. It's, it's in like, your head. It's like 24 seven at this point. Um, but at the end of the day, and I think this comes back to the mental, the last, my, my last tip, uh, based off of, I've researched a couple of different things here is because procrastination is negative thoughts. You got to be kind to yourself. You've got to cultivate positivity. Now, if you say something like, man, I'm just not a good manager yet put yet at the end of it yeah because mm-hmm. you know what that that fosters the ability for growth mm-hmm. you've you've taken a self-awareness moment there and said i i didn't do good at this task i didn't do good here it's the feedback it's the learning be kind to yourself no one ever does it right the first time mm-hmm. no if, if if we all did it right the first time we'd already be on mars elon <laughs> <laughs> um but uh, you, you just you if you hit these these tips here that we've kind of put together, I, I think you'll start to realize that it's it's something you can overcome. But it's just not going to be easy. And the most rewarding things come from things that are not easy. A thousand percent. One really quick thing I think to break those in depth five step points or five major points on how to get over procrastination. How I, I do this today, I do this all the time, and how I do it is I literally, typically I'm, I never am dealing with one problem, ever. Like I don't even know the last time I had one problem. So I have a list of problems. Because of that, what I'll do is I'll write down all the problems, and I've talked about writing down a list before. I write down all the problems, I look at each of those problems, and I basically I, I choose the one that I think I can accomplish the quickest. Right. I then choose that problem, and I knock it out. And then unknowingly that level of confidence is like damn i just knocked one off like boom and then i'll go to the next one i'm like okay this is 15 minutes Mm -hmm. boom 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 and then you look at they like in an hour and a half i just knocked seven out of ten of these tasks Mm -hmm. out yeah i do that all the time it's crazy when you have a realization moment of why the fuck did i wait so long i got so much done in such a short period of time why can't i operate like this constantly that's just because you that you physically can't like if you were a machine you'd be a machine not a human well but I, I. But you can, you can, you can create producti- productivity stuff like that. Like you put yourself in a in the ability to constantly be efficient and, and constantly be that way. But if you're constantly negative, then you're not that way. You're veering off that path. You got to stay on that path and be disciplined. I think discipline's the biggest part of that. We've talked so about that, how important I, yeah. discipline is. Yeah, like just crazy. Cannot be overstated. Discipline and mindset go hand in hand. Yeah, I agree. I've tried to though recently create these scenarios where I am in a higher productivity state because I've been thinking about this a lot lately. It's interesting that we're talking about this now, but I've been thinking about in the event that like, let's say you have on average a eight hour workday, right? For, for if you, if you work like a nine to five, how much do you get done in that eight hour workday? How many minutes are actually productive yeah. minutes? I think on average, and I've, I've looked at this, I think on average, it's about five of those hours a day. Now, I would even say that out of five of those hours on an eight-hour day, how many are actually in high productivity state? I would say probably be at 90 minutes on that period. Maybe, maybe 120. So what, you're given maybe an hour and a half, two hours out mm-hmm. of the entire day of high productivity state. Mm-hmm. What if you could take high productivity states clump them together in different portions of the day, but get more done in the high productivity states in a shorter period of time. So let's say in my first hour, the middle hour, and the last hour of the day, I typically get the most done. What if I can take that, clump it into a 90 minute state, which is cutting it in half, put it in the front hour and a half of my day, and basically be done with my entire day by 10 o'clock. Be nice. Now, I know someone that has talked about this in a, in a higher level of regard, which is, um, I will think of his name, but, damn, I forget his name, but I, I will, I'll, I'll think about it when we're t- continuing to talk. But they, they do this and they clump time brackets. So what I've started to do is I've started to 
put on my headphones, which are like noise canceling. And like, you can literally hear yourself breathe. That's yeah. how noise canceling they are. Mm -hmm. Then what I do is I put my phone on focus mode. I put my calendar on focus mode so that nothing could get through yeah. to me. And I will literally put a timer on, on my, on my watch. Actually, I do it on my watch. I'll just click like 60 minutes or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then I already have my list of, of stuff done. That's not, I'm, I'm not waiting to do, to do that during this period. I have my list of things. I have them ranked with level of least time to most time. And I literally just start cranking away. And I started to do that and incorporate that in multiple sections of the day. So like at like a nine o'clock time period an 11 o'clock time period and a one o'clock time period to see if I can get a full work effort done by basically midday. And I've been putting that to practice and it's been very interesting over the last couple of weeks of me doing that. Can I challenge you with a question? Yeah. What happens? So you're talking about organizing your day in a specific structure and I love it. I think it's a great tool. What happens when you have a day, can't do anything about it? Now, yeah. different people, different positions, it's all meetings. That's every single day. Oh, put yeah. meetings on your calendar. So how, how do you deal with that? Because if you're trying to structure your day, like I need to have a time bracket of this, time bracket of this, time bracket of this. Do you just put blocked off sections in your calendar? Like what, what, what things do you do to help you hit those I'm calling them flow states. See, I see Ty laughing back there because anybody on my team knows how excessive I am with calendar um, management. <laughs> yeah. I just um, feel like the greatest gift I can give you is be like, we don't have to film today if you're busy. And you're like, oh, thank God. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So Ty basically says like if, if – I don't know if you can – can they hear you on that one, on that point? So, yeah, I think that how I do this – first off, the person's name that has a very good – breakdown on their day-to-day -day structure uh, is Ed Milet. Ed Milet has a nice breakdown on his day and basically gets, I think he gets an, I forget the actual value that he adds. He adds, he breaks it into three different parts and I think he almost gets like a day and a half out of every day or something like that. And I've watched his video multiple times, but he has an awesome structure on that, which starts very early in the morning and then leads into later in the day. But my calendar and how to answer your question, how I work is I use Google Calendar. So I don't know if Microsoft offers this option, but if you set something on a Google calendar, you can auto one, it's, it's blocked out. So if someone is going to go like on a, with a link, like a Calendly link or something, that time allocation will not be available for them to select and, and overlap that time. But also if someone throws something on your schedule, you have the ability to, um, I, I think it's called like, well, you could do this with out of office and you can do this in focus mode in Google, but it'll auto deny and provide a message. So my, my auto deny I have message that when I drive in a car. Yeah. So if someone throws a calendar timeline on my time, it's like, let's say it's from 12 to one and they say, I want to be on there from 12 to one. It'll auto deny. And it'll say, unfortunately at this time I am currently working on an important project. Please like, you know, like, at another time or select another time on the calendar or something like that. So it'll then kick it back to them and auto deny it. Um, I block them out. It's to be like more direct as I just, yeah. I allocate it as a time on my calendar, but my day is like 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. And I break them down and sometimes I am starting to shorten them cause I have so many meetings. Yeah. So my meetings are like 30 minutes and I, I try to be as like direct as possible. Ty can tell you for the most part, I'm like very direct in meetings, probably, it almost sometimes come off, comes off like emotionless or like that I don't, I'm not as sincere, which I try to work on. But when you're trying to cram as much direct information as possible into one meeting, it's difficult. Keeping it concise, short and concise, get yeah. to the yeah. point and get out. Yeah. And then people calling you on top of that and, you know, things, fires just starting in the middle of the day. I mean, you have to allocate time for 100%. all of this. So it's, it's difficult. And I've moved around my calendar so much over the years. Yeah. But yeah. But it's to your point though, with those like, uh, time bouts um you know it's it's tough to get into a focus flow but again it's all about putting yourself in that environment um and to your point with the high focus flow um the, andrew huberman says this all the time 90 minutes is is when you're when you're trying to have a focus bout but that doesn't mean full 90 minutes is all focus flow it, it might take like 30 minutes to get into it and then maybe taper off at like 15 minutes towards the end thousand right and so that's why you only get like two hours of it maybe in a, in a day mm -hmm. but you know it's uh it, yeah it's uh, it's interesting, but you gotta distractions can't be there. Like you, you need to do what what you're saying. Like block yourself off, make those lists, come in with a plan of attack, 
don't just go into a flow state and not get anything done, which would suck. <laughs> yeah, you, you have to be selfish in a way. Yeah, you yeah, do. You do. You do. You, and the like, power of no, right? It's yeah. It's like you have to be selfish because at the end of the day, if you're prioritizing things correctly, yeah. something can wait. And people don't always have that mindset. It's like that call, that thing that you're asking, that could be tomorrow. Yeah. 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 No one's dying on the table. It, you say it all the time. So I like it. It's a lot of good stuff. Yeah. So well, hey, we're curious to hear what you all do to practice great habits when it comes to procrastination. Um, mm -hmm. Do you get a sense when you are procrastinating? What are your triggers for what procrastination? What are your triggers? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that if you have a method that we didn't introduce or that if, if there is something like a program that you use, a tool, a resource, like – I'm probably the first person that's going to look at that and, and <laughs> to buy it and like look at it and <laughs> test it out because I'm always looking for time optimi optimization resources and like I have all these things that I've tested and, and used. But if there is something that we didn't bring up that you think is a useful resource or tool for anybody else, throw it in and like we would love to, to explore it and we'll even come back on in another episode to talk about it. Definitely. Maybe we'll even bring you on and talk bring about it. Bring you on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, until then. The Bender, Bender continues. continues.